we all love optical illusions. The simpler, the better. Why do we call it optical illusions when it really should be called a book of brain failures? <laughs> because that's what it is. Oh my gosh, is it out of a diagram? I can't figure it. Brain failures. We don't call it that, but that's what it is. Okay, we think very highly of ourselves. We call ourselves intelligent. By what measure? Oh, so we list things that we do that no other animals can do. So we say, oh, we have poetry and philosophy and we have the Hubble telescope and we compose symphonies. We're intelligent. That is our measure. All right. Well, I studied this briefly. And you ask, well, what is the next closest species to human beings? Basically the chimp. Okay? And how much DNA do we have in common? It's like 98% identical DNA. Right? But we are prone to say, oh, but what a difference that 2% makes. <laughs> All the chimp can do, maybe it can stack boxes and reach a banana. Maybe. Maybe it can combine a few hand signals. Maybe. But look what we do. So we are convinced that whatever is in that 2% is significant. But I want to pose to you a disturbing thought. Maybe the difference in our cognitive capacity in the cognitive, between us and chimps, we and chimps, maybe that difference is as small as that 2% suggests. Maybe the Hubble telescope and our greatest of operas and music and poetry is not much different from stacking boxes and reaching a banana. You say, Tyson, how could you say, what do you, what, do you need? what? just look, look. That's hubris. Because imagine, in whatever is this cognitive scale, what, oh, by the way, the smartest chimps, the primatologists roll them forward, and, and they're doing what our toddlers do. Isn't that right? Our toddlers can stack boxes. Our toddlers can put up an umbrella. Our toddlers can make sign language. That's what our toddlers do. But those are smart chimps studied by the primate experts. Imagine a species, 2% beyond us, in the same scale in which we are 2% beyond the chip. How smart would they be to us? Well, let's just think about that. If they are as smart compared to us as we are to chips, then to them there'll be no difference between stacking boxes and the Hubble Space Telescope. Because they'd be capable of mental feats far beyond anything we could possibly conceive. They, their humanologists, would roll Stephen, Stephen Hawking forward and say, this one is slightly smarter than the rest. Because he, he can do astrophysics calculations in his head, like little Junior over here does. <laughs> Our greatest works of art and literature and science, their toddlers would have created in their kindergarten and would be on their refrigerator with magnets. <laughs> oh, look, little Junior just derived all of quantum mechanics. Isn't that cute? Put that on the freezer door. Oh, this is your 20th sonata. Oh, that is so cute. Call ourselves smart. You don't know if you're smart or not until you have another species blow you out of the water. And what I'm about to tweet this evening, because it disturbs me, I gotta get it off my chest. There's a worm in the street. You walk by it. Does the worm know that you think you're smart? The worm has no concept of your smarts. Because you're that much smarter than the worm. So a worm has no idea that something smart is walking by it. Which makes me wonder whether we have any concept if a super species walked by us. Maybe they're uninterested in us because we're too stupid for them to even imagine having a conversation. <laughs> you don't walk by worms and say, gee, I wonder what the worm is thinking. I mean, this is not a thought that you have. So one of the best pieces of evidence for why we haven't been visited 
by aliens. <laughs> is that they have actually observed us and concluded there is no sign of intelligent life on Earth. <laughs> Thank you all.